So now he's up for dinner. Let's see if um, if I can find Kuhn again. Uh, there he is, Kuhn. Go live with Kuhn. Go live with Kuhn. So someone, I saw that someone asked, how do you pronounce Simon and Simons? Ta -da. Like that. So I'll ask Kuhn, hey Kuhn, how do you pronounce our lead singer name? Our lead singer's name, the real name or the Simone and Simons name? No, no, the, the stage name. <laughs> <laughs> we, we call her Simony. But I would say Simone and Simons. Correct, good. I uh, told the people on Facebook that we were going live here on Instagram, and now there are almost 300 people. Wow. Of the 250,000. <laughs> maybe, maybe it's all fake. Maybe we, we only have 1,000 followers, and the rest well, is bought by our manager. Probably half is sleeping. The uh, other 10,000 are probably watching some other awesome band live. So, um, Kun, I'm going to ask the same question. What have you been up to today? I have been uh, rebuilding my house. I have That's been right. taking, taking kids to school and back back to, well, my own kids, not that you think. <laughs> <laughs> Random kids. Random kids. I take them to school. And then I went to do some uh, Krav Maga. And now I'm bruised and all sore, and I'm having a nice cold beer. And you, what did you do? I already asked, asked Mark, I explained it. You probably had the whole day of rehearsing and designing universe stuff or writing new songs, right? No, he went for a, believe it or not, he went for a bike ride. No, uh, oh yeah, of course he did. In the rain. <laughs> in rain in Italy. No, it's not Heineken, of course not. It's uh, Cornite. I don't, uh, sorry, hashtag at Werbung ohne Aufklag. It's uh, not Heineken, no. Yeah, but you, did you practice a lot? Because I heard you talking about practicing, and I cannot practice because they're drilling and they're constructing and there's so much well I time. cannot practice because I'm supposed to write new songs which I'm doing like a good boy <laughs> well I try to do that as well but you know with all the noise and stuff it's hard mm -hmm. yeah. no but I haven't started practicing yet but that's okay can we could we have any chance to participate in any moment no we're not Dragon Force you cannot you can only uh, buy it later, <laughs> not participate, right? Or are we going to let fans participate? Uh, Maybe. I, I try, cool. but you can't. There's only two. You can only no, on, add two. On the recording process. Oh, on the recording process. Uh, hmm. 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 It's difficult. Let's see if we can pull it off on our own. Yeah, you know, Dragon Force had this live sessions where people could vote for like song titles and, and which riff was cool and which solo was cool. So then they put all the solos in and then that's how they became Dragon Force. Hey, someone asks, solo. when will we know the set list for the, for the upcoming shows? Probably after the first show. When it's <laughs> I guess so too. Open. Yeah. yeah. But usually, at least I like that, uh, we try to um, change it up a little bit every show. So we have a, like a frame uh, set list, and then, you know, we put other songs on it each night. So that, you know, there are a lot of people who try to visit multiple shows and then that they don't see the same show every night. Would be really boring, right? Right. Yeah. Someone is asking, how, how did you learn to sing? Me, <laughs> well, oh. <laughs> well, I just uh, you know suddenly I was in the shower, and I <laughs> suddenly <laughs> belted out this note, and I thought, <laughs> oh, this is so awesome. 
And then uh, we sing, uh, sang actually on, a, on quite a few uh, releases of ours already, Isaac. Tell him the story. Which story? Well, uh, about how much we sing on our releases. Oh, on the acoustic uh, stuff, you mean? Yeah, did you already tell the people about our awesome Beach Boy choirs on this uh, new acoustic songs we did for the Gold Edition for Design Universe? No, but I thought which this is was out a very soon. Surprise! <laughs> <laughs> no, but uh, no, as Kun says, we we always fool around for acoustic uh, jam sessions, and uh, it's always good fun with late hours in Sand Lane with Jules van der Broek our producer and um, and he, he has this tremendous bass voice he can go yeah. so low it's great so just imagine you've been recording for a whole day you're kind of getting tired you've done a million takes and whatever and then oh we still have to record our, <laughs> our metal vocals and then we start um, singing and laughing at each other because it sounds funny and then next time, next time we do that, we, we have to have Jens in the in the studio to film yeah. it, and then have have the outtakes on like a DVD or something. It's hilarious. It's good fun. At least we think it's hilarious. Yeah, well, that's <laughs> probably <stuff>. really boring. <laughs> <laughs> what are your biggest musical inspirations? For me? Well, that's a question. I already answered it, so go ahead. Uh, for me, at the moment, I, I'm listening to a lot of soundtrack music and a lot of game soundtrack music, actually. So um, you can go everywhere with that. It, it's all very different. The orchestral stuff from John Williams to the like the new stuff Tom Hockenborg does. But you know, there's so many, so many stuff around, and, and then Spotify is really cool. Not for artists because they steal everybody's money, but for inspiration, it's really awesome. I still have hair. I don't miss my hair. Look, still there. Someone said uh, they miss your head banging. Actually, I still head bang. That's true, but you know, I, I stopped. I stopped hair banging. Yeah, but I still head bang. So Arian does what Arian oh. is up to. Yeah, I was just trying to uh, go into that. He, he You're back. <laughs> yeah, I, so I, I said this, you know, I'm procrastinating a lot, and I set this limit of an hour per day for Instagram, and I, I had I just got to that limit. <laughs> so he, oh, he really? threw me off. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> So who who has this limit on his eyes? I don't know if I have an iPhone. I don't know if the Samsung phones or whatever phone. You can like set the limit on how much time you are on the gram and on the Facebooks. Who has that? that? I want to well, see. Well, I figures. do get a um, weekly whatever, like a page with you've been uh, online that much and blah blah blah, mm -hmm. but I never watch it. But it's a notification on my phone. Yeah, I, I just said I, I should take it off when, when we do this live stuff because it's always longer than uh, than uh, an hour. But I get this, uh, oh, you've been on an hour too, mu too long on your phone. You should go to the real life again. <laughs> you don't have a life, Kun. That's why I'm too much on Instagram. So I set, <laughs> I set a timer. <laughs> it doesn't help. Uh -huh. I just try to influence the people for the better, Isaac. Hey, this is a cool question. How do shows stay interesting when you play almost the same set list every night? Well, I, I guess it's the same how you, how everybody keeps their own work interesting, right? It's 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 kind of the same, but you're in a different area every night. Um, people react differently, and. I always try to uh, catch everybody off guard, like try to make them laugh during the show. And sometimes it backfires, so I have to really laugh. And then, uh, yeah, that's it. It's interesting. <laughs> try new stuff every night, right? That's How, it. What do, you, what do you do? 
Well, I, I, the same thing, you know, I see it as not playing music, but performing. So it's, uh, yeah. Also to keep yourself sharp, it's trying new things or interaction with the band, interaction with the crowd. And as you said, every night is different. Every crowd is different. The vibe is different. Maybe the in-ear sound is slightly different. You know, there's lots of things that can change night after night. So, so it's actually never the same, but yeah. And that's why we, we change up the set list a little bit. Yeah, of course we do, and and also even if you play some songs for the one thousandth time, it never gets boring because it's not just the playing; it's also what you do. Uh, what's that? Is that your shed where you hang people and taking oh, out a beer? The beer shed. <laughs> uh, Linda threw me out because I was going to talk to my phone a lot, so she said, ah, "I want to watch TV." And then I said, no, I have to work. I have to talk to my fans together with Isaac and Mark. Of course. What's your favorite song to play live? I get that question a lot, but it really varies uh, night after night. Sometimes I'm really into the ballad because it's interesting to play uh, piano-wise, just uh, if that makes any sense. Other nights, uh, or mainly on festivals, you know, I like to play Santa Terra because I can go to the crowd with my uh, little Revo keyboard and do stuff. And other nights, it's the really heavy songs that, that, you know, make the circle pit. Sometimes when it's really boring, then I like to play Consign because then the show ends. <laughs> but it, it it's always different, you know. Uh, you know, if you play songs night after night, it can get a little bit boring. So sometimes new songs, and I'm really looking forward to play some new songs. Actually, I'm also looking forward to play those old Design Universe songs that we didn't play that much. Yeah. And uh, word is going around that we're going to play a lot of them. Cool. So I have to start practicing. I only practice Ties of Time yet because that's the only one I remember. <laughs> <laughs> well, Unleashed we play and Mother of Free Word we play a lot, right? So, yeah. And these are universe. I, I probably know how to play those. Yeah. Yeah. Same here. Even Kingdom of Heaven. I mean. Yeah, that's really. Uh, pff, I can't remember that song. It's too long. I, I have, have a the guitar tabs if that can help. <laughs> yeah, I have an attention span of ten minutes, so it doesn't really. <laughs> <laughs> Someone asks if you have been afraid of something in any uh, in any of your shows. Yes, I can remember one show, which was really weird. It was the show we played in Glasgow, I think, the night after that shit went down in the uh, Bataclan. Bataclan, yeah, and it was really like. Uh, it could be any other show, but then uh, because that happened, I was just watching the entrance of the venue all the time. And then I'm really lucky that I'm in the back. So I tried to stay behind Mark. So whenever they started shooting, I could, yeah. Yeah, I remember we had this one minute silence there, which was yeah. very awkward for me as well, because then I realized that at Bataclan, one in 15 was actually killed. Or dead. Really? Yeah, what, because people were walking over each other, so they weren't all shot. But one in fifteen. Yeah. Wow, I didn't know that. Oh. So then I, you know, if you're, it was sold out that show, or the one we did the day after, right, in Glasgow. Right. Yeah. So then I was like, holy shit, one in fifteen. That's a lot. But other than other than that. I don't really think I've ever been afraid. Well, maybe, you know, the, the, the standard nerves, like the stage fright when you started and out. And if I come up to you and do like... Rrr. Yeah, very afraid. <laughs> <laughs> that's that's why I started uh, self-defense classes. <laughs> <laughs> why don't you play Monopoly on Truth? Because it's because it's never on the set list. 
We played it a lot. Yeah, I I also caught you talking with Mark about uh, loving to play Resign to Surrender again. You know, that, that's the bad thing about the first song of the album. You actually always start the whole cycle of the tour. You start with the first song of the album, you know, the intro and then the first song. So it's really hard to change, switch that up, change it up, how do you say it? So the the first song is always, you know, I also liked really uh, the second stone to oh. play that live. Oh my god! But you know, it's gonna take at least another seven years when when that album is ten years old. It's actually in five years probably <laughs> that we're gonna play that one again, right? Right. Yeah. Hey, and what about uh, some some questions were about Power Wolf and our Sacred and Wild cover? So uh, maybe you can explain how it happened. Well, that's actually a funny story. It is. That's why yeah. I ask. <laughs> <laughs> so we are uh, on tour and we, uh, well, sometimes on tour you get bored. So what we like to do during soundcheck is to play uh, songs from the bands that are on tour with us. And in this case, it was Power Wolf. And then you take the song that's easy to remember and Power Wolf songs are always easy to remember because they have great hooks and you know, it's, it's just good songs. And then we um, started to play that, and that actually gave Power Wolf the idea to have an uh, album uh, accompanying their newest album with bands covering their songs. So actually, we gave them the idea to ask us to cover their songs. And then they asked us, and it had to be that song because we were playing that all the time. And then we, like, uh, threw some extra sauce on it, and uh, yeah, Th that's actually I, I think one of the best things we ever did uh, with all the gags in it that nobody. Yeah, e no. they're, they're so full of Easter eggs that everybody should yeah, uh, yeah. really you know you can easily name if if somebody come up with us with a list of the ten Easter eggs that that are inside that song, you get a. Because actually, I went to. Um this Alcatraz festival in Belgium a couple of weeks ago and I met up with the guys in Power Wolf and like every time when I see them I ask them so did you already find out what we're what the choir is singing in Latin oh you don't yeah don't have to tell them or you shouldn't tell them it's too, it's no too... I didn't tell them what but no but also oh well there are fans are there any Power Wolf fans here don't yeah, tell Power people Wolf people have been asking about them all the time here Aiming on a tag and all that shit. I see all that power old stuff going. So anyway, they, they, yeah. they didn't. They didn't uh, get it yet. So I'll no, keep asking too, them. They're too busy ruling the world and ruling all the festival stages. They don't have time to <laughs> to translate our our Latin. <laughs> <laughs> they should. They actually should. <laughs> they should. Yeah. Yeah. We have this two two. Two guys who are uh, Latin teachers, they always translate our Latin parts. And when I asked them to translate this, they, at first they didn't want to. <laughs> but they were having so much fun just to translate vulgar stuff into Latin. And, you know, because Latin is not a language <laughs> where you use that kind of stuff. So they really had so much fun. They were laughing and, you know, on the phone they were laughing so hard. So that's actually a really cool story. It is. If, or not. So okay. everybody, get your Latin dictionary out <laughs> and try to translate it. Oh, it's somewhere here, actually. Ah. There's also a great Latin part on the acoustic album accompanying uh, the, the gold edition of Design Universe. It's not really Latin, but it's really... Uh, inspirational lyric we came up with in the choir. <laughs> I, I, I actually think even the band doesn't know this yet. <laughs> no, that's true. That's true. Yeah. So don't tell, don't tell everybody that there's some funny, uh, some funny lyrics on the Design Universe Gold Edition. But you can only hear it if you listen it on the CD. If you listen it through Spotify, you can't hear it. So you have to uh, pre-order it now. So how do you like uh, the new merch fans out there? I love the new merch, I have to say. What about you, Kun? Me too. And um, another funny story, because I already uh, stole some of those uh, windbreaker jackets. They're actually pretty comfy. 
I thought it's uh, terrible you don't use them anyway, but it's actually really comfy and it keeps out the wind and it keeps you warm when it's not that cold outside. No, it's mm. really true. I, I don't. I'm not. This is. <laughs> I was you trying didn't to sell that from a windbreaker. No, I thought they were too thin, and you know, when when you're uh, when it's raining, it's, it's getting also like sticky on the inside, like wet and stuff. But it's actually really cool. I, I wear I'm wearing it a lot. Yeah, and it looks super cool. Because of course, you know why? <laughs> because you designed it. <laughs> yeah, that's true. Uh, no, no, because you're in it, of course. Ah, uh, yeah, 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 yeah. But uh, some people ask, why the hell do you uh, release socks? And there's another really funny story behind that, isn't it, Quinn? Go ahead, release it. No. <laughs> there's no funny story. We no. just uh, we just uh, decided to. We you know we have shirts, we have jackets, we have everything, caps and stuff. We we didn't have socks, and you know of course we can have one pair for free each. So that's you know <laughs> a, a pair of socks we don't have to buy. <laughs> And a comfy windbreaker. Oh my god! <laughs> Our manager is laughing as well. Yeah, yeah. It, it was his idea with sucks, <laughs> but I think the idea sucks. <laughs> yeah, that was not really funny. Who decides the venues in the cities? Simone. It's all uh, a matter of uh, promoters and, and uh, bookers and agents. Uh, yeah, having a lot of fun together and coming up with a good tour. Yeah. Depends on the how many people we think fit in and how many people we can get in. Right? That's right, Kun. It's a market thingy. So, uh, did the kids go to school the first day again, or...? No, it's already for two weeks here. Because here in Belgium, this today was the first day, actually. Yeah, but, you know, in Holland, the people are a lot more stupid, so we have to have two more weeks of school. Mm -hmm. Yeah. What's your opinion about gay people? My opinion? That's the question. Uh, it's a free world. It is. <laughs> I don't really have an opinion on gay people. Why should I? There's nothing wrong with it, right? No. I don't have. A, I don't have an opinion on women, or on children, or live and let live. Sure. Don't worry about everything that's strange or different. It's all good. And more questions. Can we go live when we are live on stage? Well, that would be hard because I need two hands to play. Or at least one hand to play and one hand to drink beer or wine. <laughs> Maybe Simone can do it. Yeah. He only needs one hand. Uh, what plugins do I use? Native instruments. Yeah, I use a lot of different plugins. Which ones? I should, uh, 